Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 21st of September going through until Sunday the 27th of September 2020. Thanks for joining me. In these weekly videos I look at what the planets are doing up in the sky and how they affect us here down on planet Earth. The videos are for all signs of the zodiac so it's for everyone who watches and the horoscopes are based on UK time. So I'm in England you're elsewhere in the world and take the time difference into account but like I always say don't get too hung up on the timings unless you want to know when a full moon happens and a new moon happens because the energy it gradually changes and I've had a look at the interactions the planets have with one another this week and a theme that keeps cropping up again and again is connection with other people and disconnection and reconnection and maintaining a connection it's all about how you engage with other people and it's really important this week to try and maintain some sort of sense of humor and to not take yourself so seriously i know from my life when i stop when i lose my sense of humor it's over it's it gets much much worse because if for me anyway if i'm able to talk about something and i can make myself laugh through saying it then it just lightens everything up. And with the energy this week, it can be really, really intense emotionally. So it's important to deliberately inject some levity into, into your week here. Starting with Monday, the 21st of September, we've got the moon going into Sagittarius at 7.33 in the evening. So the moon is the most sensitive part of you. It's what gives you this sense of, ah, oh, I can relax, I'm home. And Sagittarius is the centaur. It's ruled by the lucky planet Jupiter. And it really gives you a sense of optimism. Mercury is in Libra. Mercury, the communication planet, does very well in this air sign of Libra because it's able to look at things in a balanced, objective way. And it's able to connect with other people. It squares Pluto and Capricorn, so the planet of death and rebirth, in the sign of the worker. So there's friction between the way you think and communicate and your work and how you see yourself in work and who you want to be. It also squares Venus in Leo, so the planet of love and beauty and creativity in Leo. It really makes you very confident and it demands that you become the person you're meant to be. So do you compromise yourself or is it about you? And is that right? Should you stand up for yourself more? Should you compromise? Finally, Mercury in Libra quincuxes Jupiter and Capricorn, so it forms a harmonious relationship with the lucky planet. So if you work at this and if you continue to engage with the process, you will find something positive happens on Monday. So allow yourself to start the day by feeling lucky, by looking for an adventure, seeing how you can make the most of the day. Because of Mercury, you do see things fairly. So you take other people's needs and ideas into account, especially when it comes to work. So you may spot an opportunity in your life and that's in your working life and your personal life to step into the limelight to get all the attention focused on you and in your work to really excel and to be an expert at something in your specific field so if there are those kind of opportunities for you in work and i really think that you do get those so you have this opportunity to shine examine those opportunities very closely before you dismiss them as unsuitable it's really really likely that a better option presents itself to you but you have to pay attention it's you know those moments when um, something wonderful happens you meet someone great or someone mentions something and you miss the moment and afterwards you're like oh no if i'd only been paying attention or if i'd been ready for that i would have jumped on that opportunity and seized it and taken it if only i'd prepared myself mentally and that's what I'm asking you to do here on Monday the 21st. Prepare yourself mentally to really embrace an opportunity that you need to spot. So you need to pay attention and actually identify this opportunity and then you need to jump on it. On Tuesday the 22nd we have the autumn equinox. So spring equinox, autumn equinox, it's when the amount of daylight and night time is exactly even. And the sun moves into Libra at 1.32 in the afternoon. So we're in that time of year now where we're going from one season to the other. We're going from summer to autumn or fall, if you're in the States. And this time of year, you know, September, October, it's kind of an emotional wasteland as far as I feel the signs. 
it's more about taking stock of who you are and things making sense and being considerate and fitting into a group and being part of something bigger, looking outside of yourself. And I think that's what causes friction today because you're being asked to look at outside yourself. You're being asked to focus on things outside of yourself, but you require some attention this week. We've still got the moon in Sagittarius on Tuesday, so that sense of optimism and drive is still there. It, dry, it trines Chiron in Aries, so it forms a harmonious relationship with the wounded healer in the sign of the ram, saying, go and do it. And it trines Venus in Leo. So we've got loads of fire, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. All three are fire signs, and all of them show up. So fire is masculine. It has to do with your life purpose and what it is you want. So the Sagittarius kind of happy-go-lucky energy is still there, but it becomes much more complicated because now your, your life purpose and your drives and your desires kind of feed into it and make it much more powerful and intense. Any promises that are made to you today on Tuesday the 22nd need to be backed up with facts and contracts and evidence that those promises are real and that they're going to be delivered. I've put here, beware of salespeople, <laughs> okay? Beware of people who are trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I mean, I'm not saying that all salespeople are going to try and trick you, but uh, the stereotype of uh, crooked car salesmen, for instance, second-hand second -hand car salesmen. Oh yeah, the car's great. She runs like a baby. And then two miles down the road, it's over. So if there is the potential for someone to be dishonest with you, unfortunately, someone else is going to try and seize that opportunity, so beware. Also, wishful thinking comes into effect here, both in your working life and in your personal life. And it's really easy to get bamboozled because you hear what you want to hear and you choose to believe it. So if you're someone who gets the sense of, hey, this is too good to be true here on Tuesday. I've been around for a while on this planet and this is great and everything, but it seems a little bit too ideal. Then don't dismiss that message either. Really pay attention to it. And it's, it's tricky because the day before I'm saying you have this opportunity that's amazing. You have to pay attention and jump on it. And now on Tuesday the 22nd, yes, that's there, but you also have to pay attention when someone doesn't try and hustle you, okay? So that's really important. And you don't have to be rude. You can just do your research and make sure everything is, is as it should be. Wednesday, the 23rd of September, <clears throat> the moon goes into Capricorn at 17 minutes past 11 in the evening. So at the very end of the day. So it's still in Sagittarius for a lot of the day. Mercury is still in Libra, so the communication planet still looks at both sides of the coin. It evaluates everything in the context of other people, you with other people. And it squares Saturn and Capricorn. And that's an interesting meeting because Mercury in Libra is very much about making sense of things and finding fairness. And Saturn in Capricorn isn't fair. Saturn rules Capricorn, first of all, so it's very happy in that placement. Think of it like the emperor in the tarot this king on a stone throne. Can't really argue with him. He is. And Saturn in Capricorn just asks you to work hard and to create structures for yourself. It really isn't that interested in fairness. It's interested in structure and security. I think authenticity. But Saturn in Capricorn is interested in fact and doing. It's not so interested in feelings, you see. So if something is factually accurate, but it hurts someone else's feelings, I don't think Saturn would shy away from that and say, oh no, we can't do this, even though it makes sense because it could hurt someone. It's not concerned with that. It's about forming these new structures. So those two are squared. So it's like, should I conform or shouldn't I? Should I focus on me? And that's a big question here. You see, do I connect with myself or others? Venus in Leo uh, also squares Mercury in Libra. And Mercury in Libra quincuxes Neptune in Pisces. And then finally, the Capricorn moon squares the sun in Libra at the end of the day. So we've got a nice mix here now. We've got fire, but we've also got some of the other elements. We've got Pisces, so we've got water and Capricorn, we've got Earth. So Wednesday, 
the energy of Tuesday gets even more complicated, but now some of the steam dissipates and you're not so focused on my opportunities, my journey, because things become a little bit fuzzy and they dissipate. And it's like, well, what about their needs versus mine? And it becomes more confusing. Amongst all of that, people are going, certain people are going to take advantage of that and they're going to feel justified in duping you or tricking you because of these kind of reasons, okay? You didn't pay attention or you didn't read the fine print or you didn't stand up for yourself. All of these techniques used that, you know, like victim blaming. Oh, you know, it's not my fault if you didn't read the fine print and if you bought this. That's not what it's about. It's about tricking people and then having the audacity to fool them on top of it. So one, you're doing something dishonest, and then second of all, you're gonna try and gaslight someone into thinking it's their fault that you did a bad thing. That's the kind of energy that potentially comes up. If you're someone who does that, try and check yourself and don't do that anymore because it's not right. And if you're someone who people tend to do that too, then you'll become very aware of it and it's very unlikely that you put up with it on Wednesday. So deceptive, cold, manipulative people who think they've got you wrapped around their little finger are going to have a bit of a surprise on Wednesday. If you struggle to assert yourself, you're not going to struggle on Wednesday. If you kick off at the drop of a hat, be very careful on Wednesday because you'll get into a screaming match. You're going to be very clear about who's in your life because they genuinely care and they want the best for you and who's there for other reasons. And that's a fact of life. Some people don't have the conscience and the decency to say, do you know what? I'm in this person's life because I just want them for financial security. And instead of saying, do you know what? My values are all messed up and I should check myself into a nunnery for a couple of years or a monastery to sort out my beliefs and to treat people as human beings, not cash cows, that's on you. You'll get yours, it's karma. If you're gonna treat people like that, what goes around comes around. And you can be one of those mirrors to someone who's deceptive and cold by saying, hey, actually, this gaslighting that you're doing right now, not interested, bite me. For sensitive people like us, it feels unnatural and and unpleasant to be like that, to have to put these boundaries into place. Because I don't know about you, but I want people to love each other and to get on and to understand each other and to be honest. But the unfortunate reality of life is that not everyone has those same intentions when they deal with you. So it is up to you to protect yourself. And that, that's strength, that's self-care. That's saying, I'm not gonna let your energy into my life. So with this understanding, they really care and they don't, they're here to exploit me. Don't brush that under the carpet and have the strength and the, the, you owe it to yourself to say, I believe this and I'm going to do something about it. Also, don't underestimate negative people if you can possibly help it. Because people, some people really engage well with this energy and know how to use it and have practice at you know, tricking other people and getting one over on them. So don't underestimate your opponent here and don't commit to anything that you're uncertain about. Sorry, I'm just being reminded of someone who made a comment on my videos last time that I smack and swallow and it's made me really self-conscious, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to swallow. Unless I edit each one of my swallows and my smacks out of the video. And I'm not doing that. <laughs> it was me standing up for myself. Yeah, woman with that comment, bite me, the door. You know where the door is, use it. Okay, um, if someone presses you as well, if someone says, hey, you know, time's an issue here. Can you read your contract and sign it already? I've got somewhere to go, big red flag. Totally stop everything you're doing and say, okay, time may be an issue for you. Let's reschedule at another time. Here's your contract back, I'm leaving, goodbye. Just by saying these things, I can feel myself getting riled up. It doesn't feel natural, but unless you stand up for yourself at certain points in your life, people are just gonna walk all over you. It's just a fact of life. Certain people don't have that inner conscience or that right and wrong. 
and they're just going to trample all over you and that's why we do have to be able to protect ourselves. Thursday the 24th of September, Mercury is still in Libra. Okay, so this fairness thing, don't get sucked into that of life should be fair and it isn't because that can really feel horrible. Um, so Mercury in Libra opposes Mars in Aries on Thursday, so they're 180 degrees away from each other and they're on opposite ends of the chart. Mars in Aries is in retrograde, so there's friction between the self, should I assert myself or put myself in a supporting role? Or do I put myself completely aside and look at the greater good? The Capricorn Moon gives you this sense of ease when it comes to being practical and I'm working, therefore life is good and makes sense. I am making an effort, effort therefore I can feel secure. Capricorn Moon puts value on you being effective in a practical sense, working hard. It squares Chiron in Aries. So there's friction between your will and how you're being productive and effective on planet Earth. So your will is really in question. And this whole week, it's the will and connection with other people. And, you know, how do you, do you, are you always right? And do you fight off every statement that other people say? Or do you completely roll over and say, yes, I agree with everything? Or do you try and find a middle ground? And what is the middle ground? When do you stand up for yourself and when don't you? And that can be difficult. And the way to navigate that on Thursday is to listen to your feelings. And I, again, that sounds very vague. But if you absolutely feel you have to stand up for yourself in that moment, you need to. Because that's the reaction that's being brought up. It's okay to react on Thursday. Other people need to see that you can do that. Um, the Capricorn Moon also trines Uranus and Taurus, so that's really nice. That's a nice little caveat. If you're hardworking and if you do make an effort, then you will be rewarded as such. So other people may not be fair on Thursday and Wednesday this week, but the universe is fair. It's saying if you're positive and you create positive energy, you'll get more positive energy back. So Thursday is tricky, okay? You may feel hard done by, so life is really tough. Everyone else gets what they want and you don't get what you want. You're always left behind and life is just sad. Boo-hoo. Okay? If you're prone to self-pity and feeling that way, the way I am, I sometimes... I can sometimes feel really sorry for myself and I don't mind admitting that. I look at my life and I say, yeah, like yesterday, I... Um, this is going to take a minute. If you don't want to hear this, just skip ahead a minute. I wanted to do something nice for myself yesterday. It's September here in the Northern Hemisphere, so we don't have much summer left. So it was a nice warm day. So I said, hey, let's go to the beach in the morning. I go to the beach. I wanted to skate a little bit up and down the promenade on my electric skateboard. But I went to Lyme Regis and I parked at this place where I ended up in the middle of town. And there were people everywhere and I couldn't really skate and I just sat there and for about 10 minutes I sat there and I started looking around at all the gorgeous people and their children and everyone was happy and smiling and then I just saw myself sitting there by myself alone and I wanted to kill myself I was like why did I get sober for this just to be miserable <laughs> by myself for the rest of my life I was so depressed I wanted to vomit <laughs> Yeah, I felt so sorry for myself in that moment. It was just like, do you know what? There's just throw yourself in the ocean. There's no point. If you're prone to that kind of thinking, be careful Thursday. I'm going to be careful Thursday. The good news is that we can transform it on Thursday because there's a way to channel it into something better, which is looking at your work and seeing how you can add another source of income that's going to have unexpected and happy results for you. Okay? So rather than saying, poor me, uh, say, yeah, life isn't what it ought to be, but what can I do today and where do I have control? And the area of control is your work and you can increase your financial abundance and prosperity. So you're able to transform the energy and turn it around 180 degrees. So you really don't need to be stuck in that self-pity mode. If you find yourself in it on Thursday, the 24th of September, say, do you know what? Let's snap out of it. Let's regroup. Let's start again and focus on making changes in, in work. And also, if you're retired, then what you're working on, whatever it is you're focused on working on. It's also, if you're a student. So either work you get paid for or things you are working on. On Friday, the 25th of September, the Capricorn moon sits on top of Jupiter. 
Pluto and Saturn in Capricorn. So Jupiter, the lucky planet, Pluto, which is um, Hades in mythology, the planet of rebirth, and Saturn, structure and security. Those three all sit together in the Earth sign of Capricorn, and it's a nice mix. They're in retrograde, so it's urging you to review the way you work and the way you structure your life. And together with the moon, you have total insights into the practical aspects of your life. So maybe if I change the way I approach this, I might get a different outcome. And if you're not someone who's able to visualize or think in terms of planning ahead, a few steps ahead, practically, that ability is with you. You see things very, very black and white, and you're very focused on facts, and what actions you can take to change circumstances. So if you struggle to be practical or if you find it difficult to take action by yourself, you need emotional support, Friday is your day to really act and to get super, super practical and to not doubt yourself. The Capricorn moon squares Mars and Aries. Mars and Aries is the soldier and it's in retrograde. So you may feel like, why isn't the drive here? So if the drive and the conviction is missing, that does not mean you're wrong on Friday, okay? If you assess it and if you look at the facts and make sense of them, you can trust your judgment. Even if you're not like, boom, I'm the boss, I've got the most important message. Mars is in retrograde. Mercury is in Libra, also evening things out. So things are really um, unified. You can get super excited and then really depressed the other day. You're up one day and down on the floor the next. This energy is about being consistently stable and being able to focus on practical things without emotional distractions or intellectual distractions. So you're really grounded, despite Mercury being in Libra. Um, and also we have the moon Capricorn. The moon in Capricorn, rather, it sextiles Neptune in Pisces. So the water planet in the sign that it rules, Pisces, very happy. And that really opens up a whole new world of imagination to you. So with that, you have this effective way of black and white looking at things. This is good. This is bad. This is right. This is wrong. Embrace that when it comes to doing things. So don't find the answers to whether you like your best friend or not. Is it time to send in the form? Is the deadline in five days? Will the postage get it there before time, the, before the deadline ends? If the answer is yes, then sign the form and send it in. It's really about being um, practical and bringing things down to the very basics and acting on those. The one thing that, again, may throw you a little bit, you may feel a bit isolated by Friday. It may feel like it's you doing your own thing and working on your life versus everybody else and what they're doing and what they're focused on. So if you suffer from loneliness or you feel like you're not loved and you need that support and you struggle when you don't have it, make sure on Friday you call a friend or you reach out to a family member or you speak to someone who's in recovery with you or a sponsor or a vicar or your local therapist because emotionally it's a big day on Friday. Also, avoid getting caught up in what other people think of you and instead ask yourself what is fair for you. So if people are treating you badly, does the punishment fit the crime? You can have objective opinions about that. You don't always need to connect and make sure everyone's happy at the expense of yourself. And on Friday, that whole thing is going to come up to the surface. If this is something that's unresolved in your life, get ready to deal with it. And sometimes it's nice to have support and to run things by someone. You know, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? You'll know what's fair for you ultimately. So make sure that you try and base it on what is right for you rather than what other people are likely to think and do as a result. You'll start to soften your approach and with that you find that the anxiety you've had this week between you and other people or the tension that's been there between you and other people is kind of lifted and you are able to reconnect with other people on Friday more easily. And it's because you're not so emotionally invested because you see things black and white. You're like, okay, this is what needs doing. You're busy, you're distracted in a sense, and then you can connect with other people. 
it's really not the day to say, do you know what, I've been sitting on a resentment for five months and I really want to share that with you today so we can resolve it. It's not the day to do it. If anything, you'll make the resentment worse if you bring it up on Friday. It's about finding commonalities, finding things you have in common with people, especially through work or a shared activity. But if it's just, you know, bringing up issues for the sake of resolving them, no, they will just grow and get bigger. It's, it's not an easy week. You've got to stay on your toes. And I'm just kind of warning you, you've got to be your own advocate. Otherwise, people are just going to trample all over you. Because when it gets this difficult, who knows what was rude or what you're entitled to or who's allowed to speak to who a certain way. And unless you put the, the rules in place, no one else is going to do it for you. Saturday the 26th. We've got the moon going into Aquarius at 9 minutes past 6 in the morning. So the moon in Aquarius is focused on the community. Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian. Aquarius is like 11 in numerology. It's being of service and helping yourself because you help others. So things shift now. The Aquarius moon then forms a trine with the sun and Libra. We've got lots of air in the charts. So thinking and ideas are really highlighted and supported on Saturday. So get ready to be inspired. It squares Uranus and Taurus. So I just can't stop thinking about swallowing now. Uranus and Taurus is chaos and um, the unexpected. So, oh yeah, it's so helping other people and by being of service to people on Saturday, you're really likely to get an unexpected result. So that's something you ought to do for a chunk of the day anyway, because you'll get something good out of it. It sextiles Chiron and Aries. So it's unlikely that you're going to get your you're going to get hurt or you're it's unlikely that you'll be rejected if you're trying to be of service and to help. Venus and Leo also quincuxes Pluto and Capricorn. And that's where it gets complicated now because yes, you're good at being of service. Yes, something good is going to come of it. But also when you assert yourself and you, you say, I don't deserve this kind of treatment or I'm supposed to be in that position and I'm not going to I'm not going to let myself be um, fobbed off. That really creates long-term change. So you've got a big decision to make on Saturday, whether you want a nice, comfortable day on Saturday and kind of swallows your pride, or whether you want to stand up for yourself and say something and really have the potential to make things difficult in the short term, but really wonderful in the long term. So there's more conflict and possible confusion between these kind of questions internally. Do I tell people the truth or do I just say what they want to hear? So the desire to be liked and to fit in versus the desire to be truthful and authentic, they're kind of at odds with one another. There is the opportunity to stand up for yourself and what you believe in and that is going to lead to big changes in the future, in the long term, okay? So, just an example, be careful, if you're at a dinner party, be careful about telling your husband's boss that he's a complete idiot, uh, because it will make the dinner unpleasant in the short term, and it may mean that you and your husband have to move back home because the job is then finished. And no one can tell you whether you need to do that or not. Just ask yourself, does it need to be said? And if it feels like it absolutely has to be said, then say it. I mean, in that situation, maybe it's right to lose the job. If that boss really is being really horrible and um, is affecting that couple's life in a bad way, what's more important, a job or not being harassed by a horrible boss? Or if the boss is just unpleasant and it's just something you can wave aside, but the job is really good, then does it serve you to keep your mouth shut and to make nice? Or does that then eat you up inside and you say, oh, I can't sleep at night because I'm so inauthentic. I hate that boss. He needs to be told what's happening and I've got to do it. Only you can decide whether you're going to live with yourself. And that's where I really think the sense of humor needs to come in. 
Because these things really in the long term, does it really matter if you tell the boss that he's a disgusting pig? He's not going to listen anyway. Most people, that's the thing about arguing with people that I've discovered in my life and trying to change people's opinions. As soon as you're out of the room or no longer within their consciousness for a day or two, they're going to revert to their own ideas and thinking anyway. And I don't think that's a cynical view of humanity. I don't. I think that if you get someone... If you argue with someone and you get them to agree with you, it's usually not because there's been some genuine shift within the other person. They just see it from your perspective for now. And it may be right, but that doesn't, go, doesn't mean they're going to do things correctly in future. <laughs> so I wouldn't waste my energy unless it's not something you can live with kind of sitting on you that's not been said or spoken about. It could also be a relationship, you know, if you're really stuck in a relationship that's loveless and you've been biting your tongue for years and years and years, be careful because it's going to come up on Saturday. And sooner or later, are you going to say something or are you going to stay with it for another 20 years? And who's to say which option is better or worse? It's all down to what you can live with. And you should be really kind to yourself. This week you should have a sense of humor and don't take it so seriously. So if, the, if your um, sister-in-law is a real cow and you just want to let her have it, but you don't find the right moment or words to do it, and you lie in bed at three in the morning, morning seething about how you wanted to let her have it, just laugh and let it go. Who cares? You're not going to change her anyway. That's my thinking on it. You know, if it makes you sick, if the resentment's there and if you just if you feel poisoned, maybe you need to address it to get it out of your system. Meditate on it, pray on it. It's something that's going to be on your grid. Finally, on Sunday the 27th of September, we've got Mercury going into Scorpio. And now the communication planet is no longer interested in fairness or objectivity or listening to the other person's point of view. Scorpio is about diving to the emotional truth of things identifying it and then usually transforming it and healing it. But Mercury in Scorpio certainly is going to mean that you talk about your feelings and with this kind of frazzled, complicated energy, adding your feelings to it is going to make it even more volatile and even more difficult. So I would kind of hold back now with this Mercury shift. Um, the Aquarius moon opposes Venus in Leo. So we still have this friction between should I be a teacher and good for all or should I demand applause and get people to tell me how wonderful I am because I need to hear it. <laughs> so <laughs> again, only you can answer which one needs to happen and which one is going to have the best effect for everyone involved. That's a good question to ask yourself actually on Sunday. What's going to have the best effect and best possible outcome for the greatest amount of people? And that's an easy way to avoid falling into a trap here on Sunday. Um, Overall, on Sunday, I would say it's time to wind it in a bit, wind your neck in a bit, because you're going to become much more biased and emotional with the Mercury shift. You may overstep the mark and you may feel like you need to inform everybody in your life about how you feel and how they've disappointed you and how they've alienated you and how you're completely right about everything and you're totally fed up. That may be what you want to do and it may be how you feel. But don't be surprised if you then end up even more isolated because you've told everyone to back off. Also, if you feel like you need to educate those people around you, like you can't eat with your mouth open or you can't have your arm on the, your elbow on the table or you can't yell at me like that, you can't raise your voice. If you feel like you have to educate those people around you to behave, forget it, you're wasting your breath. Instead, Focus on the people who don't need educating and who you have in your life and you know they have the best interests at heart for you. Because if, if you know that someone cares about you, then you're not going to be as demanding. But if you're uncertain, then forget it. It's really not the right time to try and persuade people or to bring them on board. Also for you, it will just complicate things even more. So just try and observe 
listen to your feelings, but don't feel obligated to share every feeling that comes up for you. It's going to make things worse, not better. Because people will misunderstand. If everyone understood what you're feeling, what you're going through, and they all huddled and rallied around you and said, we'll get through this together, then great. That's not the case. There's a great potential for misunderstanding and that your truth triggers someone else's truth and then it just turns into a disaster. Okay, so also, again, if you're uncertain about should I, shouldn't I, if you're un if you're undecided about what you're willing to put up with, then err on the side of caution. You know, if it doesn't absolutely make your blood boil and you don't have to say something on Sunday, then don't. The opportunity for a real blowout, which will then make changes, is on Saturday. So if you want to get into a fight or if you don't know how to have a fight and you really need to have it out with someone and that just goes against your very nature but you need to do it, then Saturday is the best day to have that confrontation and to have it out because it is going to affect long-term permanent change. Whereas Sunday, it's just much more muddled emotionally and people will dismiss it saying, oh, he had a bad day or she was drunk or whatever. So it's complicated soup here when other people are involved and you need to be the person responsible for your feelings and your humor and maintaining the good vibes within because other people aren't mainly focused on your well-being this week. So you need to be. Have a great time. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via the website, gregoryscott.com. Click on the button on the front page to order your reading with me. I use astrology in my personal readings and I can answer any questions you have about your life purpose or vocational aptitudes, love, money, travel, work, moving, where to live, anything at all. Get in touch with me via the website, gregoryscott.com. Have an amazing week. If you like this video, then please give it a like, a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to join this channel and share the video online if you want to let other people in on what's happening this week. <laughs> if you have advice about, no, I'm being facetious now, I was going to say, if you have advice about how to stop burping and belching while you're talking, <laughs> then tell me that, but I'm just being facetious. Have a lovely week and I'll speak to you next week. All the best.